Welcome everyone. Today I'm just gonna do an oil change on my car. Figure out we'll just record my oil change on this channel. The first step I took was I jacked the car up. Obviously, I took the belly pan off. And now let's see what do you need to do to change the oil. What are the plugs? There are three basic plugs that we need to take out on this dry sump here. There is right here. Let me zoom in if I can. As you can see here, there is plug number one. Right here it is a triple spline bolts here. These are eight millimeter triple spline bolts. Whoa, let's see here, if I can try to squeeze in. Right here, there's number one. Number two is on the other side. These are easy too. This is another triple spline bolt. So I need to take this one out. And finally this one, the third one over here, right here. This one gives uh, some people some issues because there is basically no not a lot of space here to try to fit a regular bolt here uh, Audi provides a special tool a triple spline tool that actually fits in at an angle and it wobbles down acts like a wobble and then you use that to torque it and obviously I, I can see here that previous text they did not have that special tool I can see here that a previous tech just used a like a plumber's wrench and untorqued it this way and I, I don't like that so I'm gonna try to get this out myself I have a small triple spline bit here let's get out here right here this is an M8 Hopefully I could go in and have enough leverage here. I use this small eight, small triple spline bit here with in combination of a, let's see here, 10 millimeter. Ten millimeter wrench here. So hopefully I'll be able to angle in and then take this off and then I'll be good to go. Next and final bolt I need to take out is for the oil uh, the oil tank because this is a dry sump type of system here. Meaning that the sump right here, the sump is dry, meaning that there, the oil does not sit below the engine and actually gets circulated through the oil cooler and then ends up majority of the oil ends up in a tank right here and that's the final bolt so let's go up top here and you, you can see this is the oil filler neck where i need to fill the oil and this is actually connected to the oil tank and then the oil filter is all the way right there uh, you need a 32 millimeter bolt to take out the oil filter and that's it that's the oil change in a nutshell let's get started so looks like my bit is a little bit too long as you can see here once i take took out this part of the belly pan the bit that i have is a little bit too short so i can again cheat and try to get some pliers and just wrench this out I really don't like that. So what I'm going to do, and these bits are pretty cheap, so I'm just going to get an angle grinder, grind this down, and then hopefully it should fit in between the recess here. So I can like hook this bit into the triple spline here. So I initially tried to grind the bit down with an angle grinder, but switched over to a Dremel to cut the majority of the length off first. Once I had a rough cut of the bit, I then used my angle grinder to smooth out the rough cut. And after I modded up this bit here, I was able to have enough uh, room to go in and then use a 10 millimeter wrench to and then torque this out. I then proceeded to drain the oil from the three drain holes of the oil sump. This process took me about 30 to 40 minutes, allowing enough oil to drain out of three of these drain holes. Afterwards, I then proceed to install new drain plugs and torque them to the specification. 
So I actually got new old drain plugs for the dry sump tank, and these are the old ones. One thing to note here is this one. This one was the this was the one that had very little clearance. So if you could look here, you can see how past techs have done this. They just really used a uh, pliers or some sort of plumber wrench to torque this down or untorque this. As you can see here, this, this is just horrible. You'll see how the bolt has been marred, scarred like this. Just, just really bad. So tells you that even if you pay someone to do it, it doesn't mean that they'll do it right. Next, I used a 32 millimeter socket to take out the oil filter that sits on top of the engine. I had to get a ladder to give me enough leverage to take out the oil filter, but as soon as I got the ladder, I was able to go in and gently take out the filter. And here's the oil filter housing. After I got this off, it was screwed on. It was actually clipped on here. And you can see the clips here. So once you try to take this off, you need, you just need to go and bend it at different angles to, and just unclip this housing here. The new oil filter comes with a new O-ring here, and you need to replace this O-ring that is on here, over here. So yeah, make sure to replace this, lubricate this with oil, plus once you get that, replace that, you also need to lubricate oil with this O-ring here. And this O-ring comes with the new filter. Just make sure to lubricate it with oil before you clip this back on and reinstall it into the housing. And last but not least is to fill this oil neck, this oil tank with about 10.6 quarts. That's what the service manual says. It says this is a dry sump tank. It's recommended to fill up 9.6 or even nine quarts, run the car, get up to temperature, then shut it off and go and get the current oil reading off this dipstick right here. So that's what I'm gonna do because it's a dry sump tank. These cars, you don't want to overfill oil and that's it's, it's just a bad time if you actually happen to fill overfill oil for these type of cars with this dry sump lubrication system. So I'm, I'm gonna measure I'm going to add in around 9.6 quarts, run the car, check for leaks, and then check the oil level and then fill up to uh, the level where it says uh, it's full. poured in 9.6 quarts so I'm going to just let it idle run get up to operate temperature and then shut it off and then check the oil level and top off as much as I need <laughs> 